friends, welcome to episode number 58 of Driftless Knitting. My name is Jennifer. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Driftless Knitter, and you can find the podcast on Ravelry if you search for Driftless Knitting under the Groups tab. I have been a terrible Ravelry host lately and haven't been putting anything in the group um, threads or anything like that, so yeah, there might be stuff there, there might not be, and take it or leave it, I guess, but it is there. There is a podcast group, um, and maybe one of these days I will get back into the habit of doing show notes. So I am coming to you from um, just outside Madison, Wisconsin on Monday the, oh, I was about to say the 8th of March. It's the 12th of March. I don't know why I had 8 in my head, but um, it is March 12th, and it is about, oh my gosh, it's almost noon. It's almost 12, um, which is really strange because we just moved forward in time. We're time travelers. Okay, that sounded weird. I put that really strangely. So yesterday was the first day of daylight savings time um, in the spring, which means we move forward an hour. Um, in the fall, we move back an hour. So I'm still, of course, not used to it because it's only day two and it just feels really strange um, that it's already 12 o'clock and yeah midday I yeah it always kind of gets me off balance for about a week or so but it's gonna be actually really nice now I drive home from work around a little after five o'clock in the evening and it's still gonna be like bright sunlight so that's really awesome. Um, lately, of course, with the days getting longer, it's been kind of twilight-ish by the time I drive home, which is still better than pitch dark, <laughs> but now it's gonna be really bright and sunny, and that's gonna be really nice. Um, as the days do get longer, going into spring, we're gonna be able to do more outside. When we get home from work, it won't be just like, you know, hunker down and have dinner, go to bed, you know, watch something, go to bed. Um, we're actually going to be able to get out a little more and get some fresh air and I'm so, so ready for that. I do really like the winter and I like cold weather in a strange way, but um, you're definitely ready for a change. You're ready for spring and summer after about how many months of this? I don't even know what month we're going on. Five? ish five and a half to six months of winter it's a little long so anyway so it is sunny today which is really nice and it's kind of warm ish it's almost 40 degrees uh, Fahrenheit of course and uh, yeah it, it has a little bit of spring in the air which is great um, I am drinking a cup of black coffee it is flavored coffee um, who is I oh I had commented on um, Tiffany, the Woolen Homesteads podcast about how I almost so sometimes feel ashamed about, she was asking about your favorite tea to drink uh, while you're knitting or while you're, you know, watching podcasts or kind of doing your crafting thing. And I don't really drink tea. Um, sometimes I do, but it usually only happens when it's really cold or I'm sick. Um, I enjoy tea. I just don't, I don't reach for it. So um, I put my favorite flavor of um, coffee. And I drink a vanilla hazelnut flavored coffee. And sometimes I almost feel ashamed drinking flavored coffee because I know like true connoisseurs of coffee kind of look down on flavored coffee a little bit. But um, I have found, I really, really, really like Cameron's coffee, which I don't know is if it's really circulated outside of this area. Um, it's been fairly new to me in the last couple of years that I've been drinking it. So, um, it's my favorite flavor. It's delicious and smooth and wonderful. And I have it in my Crossroads Coffee House mug, which is the local coffee house here in town. And I got this last year when I, uh, moved, when I moved from Winona, well, from La Crescent. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> um, I thought today, since um, I have been getting, oh boy, I'm sort of, I don't know how uh, steady the table is where my camera or my phone is on, so 
my coffee's there, we're gonna cross our fingers that um, it doesn't tip over. <laughs> so, I have had quite uh, an influx of subscribers to my, uh, my podcast channel, to my YouTube channel, um, which has been great. I think it is because I've had a couple mentions on um, definitely one well-known podcast, which is the Girls in the Yarn Cafe podcast. And uh, thank you to Tristan and Christy for saying really sweet things about um, the podcast and and about me as a host of a podcast. Um, it was really, really, really fun to hear. So I have been getting some new subscribers and that's really exciting. We're almost to 400, um, which I was in the 300s for quite a while, for maybe almost six months or so. Um, so to get up to 400 is, is pretty exciting for me. And yeah, so I wanted to maybe do a short introduction of myself and kind of an explanation of why I call myself the Driftless Knitter, which in turn why the podcast is called Driftless Knitting. So like I said, my name is Jennifer and um, I first started this podcast a little over a year ago when I was living in La Crescent, Minnesota. La Crescent, Minnesota is right across the river from La Crosse, Wisconsin. It's right on the Mississippi River and it's just downriver from Winona, Minnesota, which is where um, I went to college. I moved there for college in 2008. <laughs> I couldn't remember quite the year. I'm like, what year did I graduate? Um, 2008, the fall of 2008, and I did four years there um, at the at Winona State University. I was a literature major, so I have my degree in English um, with an emphasis on literature and language, and enjoyed every second, maybe every second, <laughs> maybe not every second, I mean, who enjoys every second of school, but um, I enjoyed it so much. Um, I met some of my best friends there, um, my two college roommates and I still are very much in contact with each other and we get together, um, we try to get together every couple of months. Um, they both have kids now so it's a, getting a little harder but um, we, still, we still make an effort to do that. And I had fantastic professors and I really enjoyed what I studied so um, just such a great experience and what made it even better of an experience besides just the college was the town. So it is located in Winona, Minnesota, and it's this little town. Um, it feels smaller than it actually is. It's a, almost 30,000 people. Um, and then when the students come in, that adds another eight, eight to 9,000. When I went there, it was like eight and a half thousand. Yeah. But I don't know how, um, yeah, how many are currently enrolled. But uh, so it's, it's a, sizable town, sizable little community, um, but the the downtown is just beautiful. Um, it's right on the Mississippi River, like, I mean, right on the Mississippi River. So the culture there um, is very uh, river oriented. There's a community of people who live in boat houses, which is really cool. We have the Great River Shakespeare Festival, um, which kind of pulls inspiration from the river, from the Mississippi. Um, that's a fantastic festival, by the way. If you are in the area, if you are a Shakespeare lover or a theater lover, it is world class. It is top notch and they do it every summer. It spans from the end of June to the beginning of August. It is incredible. Um, that's actually one of the reasons I went to school there. We, this is a total tangent, I apologize, but we started going to the Shakespeare Festival when I was um, in eighth grade and um, my sister was looking at colleges. She was a sophomore in high school, so she was kind of starting to think about what college to go to. And we went to um, the, we started going to the Shakespeare Festival in Winona, and that inspired her to go to Winona State, which she did. Um, so she started going there, and then two years after she started, I started, and we both went there um, for, for our four year duration. Um, and yeah, it's just very, very inspiring community. Um, so after my college years, I ended up staying in Winona. I had gotten a job at the local yarn store and I decided I wanted to 
be a part of the community for a little bit longer and uh, work at that wonderful, wonderful job for a little longer. And that turned into an additional six years of living there. So I had originally planned maybe one or two, um, and then I would kind of maybe move on and move to a big city or something. I kind of knew I'd never move to a big city, but, um, you know, kind of chase that, that, that big paying job or something like that. And then I decided, you know, what I really love was small business and I loved my job at the yarn store. Um, I started working there uh, pretty much full time and it was just, yeah, it was wonderful. So I learned everything that I know almost um, from working at that store for about six and a half years. And it was the best experience of my life. It, I met so many amazing people, amazing people. Some of my best friends, some of my surrogate family, um, I met through, through that store and it's just a wonderful, wonderful place. So yeah, Yarnology in Winona, Minnesota was my second home for a very long time. And it wasn't until recently, about a little over six months ago, that um, I left that job and my, me and my fiance moved to the Madison area of Wisconsin. And it was really, really tough uh, to move and to give up kind of living in that area. But um, we like it here. We're still adjusting, but we like it a lot. And I've met a lot of people. Um, thankfully, I still work in the yarn industry. So when we moved here, I was looking for job opportunities. I applied to a million because let's be real, you don't get the first job that you apply for. But on a whim, I emailed the ladies at Knit Circus Yarns, which is a hand dye yarn company here in Madison, and asked if they could use any, any help. Um, at first, it was just going to be a part-time gig, and then all the pieces fell into place, and they ended up needing someone full-time. So I now work there, and I love it. Um, it is definitely different than working at Yarnology, but in a good way. Like, it's not... It's still in the industry. I still get to work and talk about what I love. Um, I still do a little bit of like the um, retail aspect of it and then do some marketing and advertising and things like that. Um, so it is, it's really interesting. I'm learning a lot and I really, really love it. So that's kind of my background on how I really, really got into knitting. Um, and I originally started knitting when I was uh, like seven or eight um, for my grandmother and you know kind of went it kind of came and went for me um, like most children I put it down I picked it up um, but I always kind of knew how to do it for you know my entire childhood and then when I got to college um, a couple of my friends knit and then the yarn store opened and we all wanted to go there and then I got the job so one thing led to another and I just totally immersed myself um, in the world of yarn and the world of knitting um, and fiber and spinning and sheep and oh man it is a slippery slope isn't it so yeah and the reason why um, I call the podcast Driftless Knitting um, it originally started with my my blog name. So I had a blog for a while called The Driftless Knitter. And again, that's where my Instagram and my Ravelry name came from. Um, because it was... I was very inspired by um, the area that I lived in up in Minnesota. So um, the Driftless area is the... Let's see, the eastern side, the eastern... Um, kind of corner of Minnesota, the western side of southern Wisconsin, the very, very northwestern side of Illinois, and the very northeastern side of um, Iowa is the Driftless region. <laughs> if you can picture that on a U.S. map. Um, I should maybe post a U.S. map so you can kind of picture it, but In this area, the glaciers actually missed us, so um, we do not have a lot of the flatland that is typically associated with Minnesota 
Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa, um, and the whole plains of the United States. Um, so we have this really cool area where we have bluffs, especially along the Mississippi where Winona is located. Um, up and down the Mississippi for a good stretch, there are just the most majestic, beautiful, amazing bluffs. Um, and you know, the, the river is there, the, there's um, hills and coolies, that's, you know, these big hills and valleys um, in Wisconsin, they're called coolies. And it is some of the most amazing landscape. Um, I'm biased, of course, but I think it's just the most beautiful landscape, um, especially because you don't really expect it when you think about the Midwest um, of the United States. I, I'm originally a flatlander. I grew up in Northern Illinois, so I grew up with flat, flat cornfields, um, seeing miles and miles into the distance. Um, but I just fell in love with the hills and the bluffs of the Winona Driftless area. Um, so that's where I got the inspiration for the name. Um, and when I moved here, I was a little worried because, you know, I, I was like, well, I'm, t I'm not going to be in the Driftless area anymore. Come to find out, uh, the town that I live in, which is just west of Madison, we are the very cusp of the outside kind of edge of the Driftless region. Um, so we are, yeah, kind of the last, yeah, the last area before you get into the flatlands um, of the rest of Wisconsin and then Illinois. So I was able to keep my name and not be a fraud. And I, you know, I'm still kind of in, the hills and bluffs aren't as um, prominent here as they are, you know, further further west in Wisconsin and then you know when you cross over into eastern Minnesota but um, it's definitely still beautiful there's still you know some gorgeous sights and looking out my um, my glass sliding door right here is actually um, a bluff right behind me um, or the kind of the side of a hill it's kind of a uh, it's a pretty pretty straight drop so we're gonna call it a bluff but yeah so that is the story behind the podcast and my username my and my um, podcast name and yeah I'm just really I get really inspired by um, the environment around me and especially the gorgeous gorgeous landscape of the driftless um, also sort of the feeling behind the word driftless um, it kind of permeates this area it's in a lot of um, a lot of things around here so it'll be on the name, there's a Driftless Magazine, there's um, Driftless Makers, there's, that's a group on Instagram, um, there, there's like the Driftless uh, Market, the, you know, a lot of things are kind of named after it, this feeling of being connected to um, the outdoors and nature, and um, I don't know, it's just, it's a very special area, a very special place, and a lot of us really connect with it. So, um, yeah, I really love that it is my, my, my crafting name, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, now that we are, oh my gosh, almost 20 minutes in, hopefully you guys didn't find that, like, super boring, and maybe a little bit informative or, or interesting, but, um, let's get into the knitting. So, First of all, I will talk about what I'm wearing. This is a shawl uh, that I designed. It is called Frozen Leaves, and it is knit out of some MCN base fingering weight uh, by, here, let me stand up, by Lisa of now Abacus Dye Works. That is her new name. She used to be Three Sisters Fiber Company. So um, she dyed this as a special colorway for Yarnology two winters ago, I believe So it is so pretty. I love the colors and it is the softest yarn um, It's a really really big Shawl, so it's really comfortable to wear around my neck. I'm never worried that it's gonna like fall off or anything um, and Because it's still a little chilly here. I just kind of wanted something something soft and snuggly um, around my neck so Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. This pattern is available on Ravelry. Um, I don't know if you could see when I was kind of standing up there, it has like a lace um, 
edging that uh, looks like leaves. And then it has some eyelets throughout that are kind of spaced out. And yeah, yeah, and I really like it. So let's move on to works in progress. I have a few works in progress to show you. And I feel like I should maybe start with, maybe I should start with the new one. Because the other two you've seen a couple of times. Um, but this one I actually just cast on this morning. So I have been wanting to make something for uh, my friend Elizabeth. She was my college roommate that I mentioned before. Um, and she is having her second baby. She's having a little boy at the end of this month. And I wanted to make something um, for him. And she's not having like, since it is her second baby, she's not having a shower or anything for him. Um, but of course, you don't have to have a baby shower to like give a hand knit baby, well to give any sort of baby gift, but especially a hand knit one, I don't know. I feel like as knitters we all sort of just like, well not all, I shouldn't, I shouldn't generalize, but um, I know a lot of us take any opportunity to knit something special for a little one. I definitely do. Um, so whether or not there's a shower or a party or anything, I'm gonna knit him something. So I decided to cast this on. This is the pure, pure pair. Oh my God. Pure parium cardigan. Okay. Judge for yourself. How do you say that? <laughs> I don't know. I did my best. Um, and this is a little cardigan knit out of DK weight. And there's the, that's the picture. That's the one I recognized on Ravelry. I've seen I haven't clicked into the pattern, but I've seen um, this as being a very popular cardigan for a really long time on Ravelry. And um, I recently saw someone who had knit this and absolutely fell in love with it. So this is by Kelly Brooker and it is a free Ravelry pattern. So that's pretty cool. And there's a little picture down here of kind of what it looks like. You can see it's a cardigan, but it's kind of has these offset buttons. And what happens is instead of the buttons and the button band being in the middle, it's off to the side and the whole front kind of comes over and buttons down the side. So, so cute. And I, I had this yarn picked up for a while for maybe about a month. And then finally this morning, I'm like, you know what? I just need to cast on. It's gonna be a really fun knit. I've been working on the same two projects for the last two weeks. Um, and I need something a little different thrown in there. <laughs> so since I have to get this done anyway, by, by the end of the month, I figured it was perfect. So this is the yarn I'm using. Sorry, I'm used to the camera being on this side, but I have it on this side today. <laughs> so this is the yarn I'm using. This is a DK weight. Um, it is, oh, I have the, good, I did remember, I remember to put the band on my side table. So this colorway is called Meadow Lark, and it is mountain color, beautiful hand-painted yarn from Montana, I think Montana, is that MT? Oh my gosh, I, so bad. Okay, there's the. There's the tag, and here's the back of it. So you can see it's 100% superwash merino, 345, 345 yards, yep. So I'm gonna have like almost half a skein left after this, because I'm knitting the, um, this only comes in one, this particular pattern only comes in one size, the free one. She does have one that goes up to it starts at the little size and then goes all the way up to like a child's size five or something like that. And that one is um, pay for. It's like a $7 pattern. Um, but I figured it's still, I don't know, it's still going to be a little chilly when he's born. End of March, even into April around here can be breezy and chilly and cold. So I thought having a nice light, because this is kind of a light fabric, nice light um, sweater would be, would be kind of nice. Um, and I fully understand that babies grow fast and that he will probably wear this once or twice and will grow out of it. But that's okay because, I mean, 
we love it when our knitwear gets used, but the gift and the thought behind it almost is the main thing. Like I'm enjoying just knitting this, thinking about my friend and thinking about her new baby and not, you know, being really excited to, to meet him and, um, and yeah, and it'll always be around. That's the other thing. People, most people that I know, um, realize what a gift, a hand knit item is and they keep it. They're not going to just donate it or give it away. Um, I've already, I've already had like cousins and my sister and friends of mine say like, you know, when, when you have a kid, when you have a baby, I'll give this back to you and you can use it. And then it's almost like things get passed around, things get passed on, um, which I think is really, really great. And that's, that's the really cool thing. These are not disposable, throw away, donate to Goodwill type of presents. These are really important things that, you know, maybe we're all going to use eventually. Um, at least that's what I like to think. <laughs> so yes, so he will probably grow out of this very quickly, but it is so fun to knit. I'm already having a blast. This took me probably about 20 minutes to knit. Um, so you can kind of see it's kind of really weird to show you it like this because it's curling up, but this is the top. Um, I just want to show you the colors, how they're knitting out. I think that is really, really pretty. The stitch definition on this yarn is amazing. And it does feel slightly more rustic than some merino wools that I've used, but I'm, I'm wondering if that's just the twist and the ply. So it is a, it looks like a two ply. Let me show you, oh, that's too dark, hold on. I'll show it to you off the needle here. So, um, is it gonna, I don't know, it's still focusing on my face, but you can kind of see it's a two-ply. Two it's very stretchy and bouncy. Um, that's the main thing that I noticed when I was knitting this little bit this morning is, yeah, it's very, very um, springy just in the way it kind of moves and when you're knitting with it, you can really feel it um, kind of bounce, which is, I, I don't know, I like the feel of it. I really like um, the stitch definition, like I said, the feel of it, it isn't, um, it isn't like silky soft, so it's not gonna pill, you know, very much. And I, I'm really, really enjoying it. So um, let me show you just the, you can kind of see how it's gonna wrap around just by the way the stitches are laid out. So here's the two button bands. Maybe this is gonna be foolhardy here, but okay. So here's the two button bands here. And then this all the way across is the front. And then here's a sleeve. So you can see my two markers there. There and there is the sleeve. And this is the back stretching. Okay, stretching all the way across, that's the back. And then here's the second sleeve going from there to there. And then here's the second button band right away. So there isn't like two fronts, you know, button band, two fronts and a back and sleeves. Um, the one front comes all the way across and it buttons down the side. So yes, I am very excited. I can't wait to knit on more of this. Um, it is such a treat to be knitting with new yarn and a new project. And I love the projects I'm working on other than this, but um, yeah, it's sometimes nice to just throw something new in there. <laughs> and I'm, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying that. So hopefully by the next time I podcast, I will either be finished or very close to finished. Lately, I haven't been getting a whole lot of knitting time. Um, so last week I didn't podcast, A, because we were kind of busy. Seaver had taken the day off because the day before that we were in Milwaukee. And um, the next day we got home really, really late on Sunday night. So we took the day off on Monday. And in anticipation of that, he didn't like call in sick. He, it was personal time. But um, so we kind of spent the whole day here at home together and um, had a really nice kind of quiet day. So I didn't really want to ruin that by having to podcast um, and kick him out or something or kick him upstairs. Um, and also I really had not a lot of progress made on my projects. 
um, with wedding planning and work and I don't know, there's just been a lot going on that I've only been kind of snatching some moments of knitting. Um, this past week was better, but the week before was, there was like two full days where I didn't touch my knitting needles and I was trying to go a little, little crazy. Um, but yeah, so hopefully next week, this upcoming week, I should say this week, cause it's Monday, duh. Um, hopefully I'll get more time to knit. Anyway, I'm going to show you my next work in progress. This one has unfortunately not been getting like, I don't know, a lot of attention. This is mostly my TV knitting. Um, when Seaver and I finished, we finished the first season of Outlander. Oh my God, that last episode was terrifying. Those of you who watch Outlander, what? That last season of, se or that last episode of season one was awful. Like, awful. I felt like my heart was breaking for Jamie. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Ah, okay. I'm not going to give anything away, but it was awful to watch that. Okay. So this is what I was knitting on when we had watched Outlander. And then uh, when we finished that, we've been also watching um, Planet Earth number two, uh, which has been really, really fun. That's on Netflix. Um, so this is my piece of silver cardigan, not cardigan, piece of silver sweater um, by Vera Valamaki. And it is coming along. It doesn't look super different from the last time I showed you, but I did do, I did do a bit of work. So I thought I'd just show it to you again. So I think this is where I placed this marker the last time I showed it. Um, this is the underarm, and then here is the stitch marker, or the progress keeper, made by my friend Carolyn. It's a cinnamon roll, if you can't tell. It's kind of, kind of little. Um, so yeah, I had about maybe an inch or so done under the underarm, and then I've knit uh, that much since then. So, like I said, I haven't been monogamous, I haven't been really prioritizing this um but it has been fun and I'm really glad I did get you know a couple inches done I now that I'm thinking about it I really should finish it by the time the weather warms up because or before the weather warms up because I'd I'd really like to wear it <laughs> maybe once before next winter but um we'll see I don't know I don't know if I will as long as I just keep going on it, that's my main goal, is just keep going. Don't let it sit in a bag for too long. Don't let it languish. So once I get the body done, then I'll still have the sleeves, and sleeves take even longer. So I don't know why I'm <laughs> saying it'll go faster. I was about to say it'll go faster once I get the body done. Sleeves do take a while. So anyway, I really like it. This is out of the lane, uh, issue number one, and um, like I said, it's by Vera Valamaki. The yarn is by Miss Babs. Don't ask me what color it is because I have no idea. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I don't know where the tag went. I wound it up probably about a year ago, not quite a year ago, with the thought that I would do um, a sweater with it. I wasn't sure which one, but I, I wanted it wound up. And I don't know where the tag went, so um, yes. But Miss Babs, lovely 7525 merino nylon, and yeah, I I'm excited for this to be done. So yay! And I was just uh, catching up on Bethany of Woolberry Fiber Company podcast, and she is knitting one. Actually, I think she's done by now. But when she was filming her latest podcast episode. She had just finished the body and she was going to go on to the sleeves and I was so jealous because <laughs> she was kind of around like when I was knitting my turtleneck, she was knitting hers and um, we were both kind of at the same spot, like dividing for sleeves at the same time. And then I kind of let mine, um, I don't know, I didn't let it sit, but um, 
I wasn't really focused on it, like I said, and I think she just like, she was monogamous and just whipped it out and got it done, and I'm so jealous because I would love, love to wear this, but it's okay, it's okay, it'll happen, it'll happen. And okay, so one of the reasons why I wasn't monogamous on my piece of silver sweater was because I was being distracted by, sorry, I'm just putting this on a blocker, distracted by these. And those of you who follow me on Instagram or watch the last episode, I'm sure you will guess what I'm about to show you. So this is a work in progress and a hop, a half of a pair. Um, so let me show you the, the hop first. This is my new sock. And because the light is coming in the way it is, and this is kind of a variegated or tonal yarn, you can't, again, I was putting it on the side, sorry. You can't really see the patterning like super, super well. Well, that's pretty good actually. So, I'm so excited. These are the, um, should I tell you the name of them? This is a new design uh, by myself. This is my first ever sock design and I absolutely love them. So, I will tell you the name. Okay, so these are gonna be called the Fairy Tree Socks. And these are inspired by, um, well, I was knitting them for Babbel's Traveling Yarns um, Knit Along. <laughs> I just forgot that word. <laughs> um, knit Along, her Patty's Day Cal for, obviously, for St. Saint, Saint Patrick's Day. And the Cal is basically to knit anything out of green yarn or any yarn by an Irish hand dyer, which that yarn doesn't have to be green. But if you're not knitting with an Irish hand dyer, it has to be green. So, um, I had this yarn in my stash for a very, very long time, um, and it is a BFL nylon blend by uh, Pagewood Farms, and this is the Ireland colorway. So, when she was kind of announcing this knit along, and I was thinking about what could I do, this yarn just popped into my head. I really wanted to knit a pair of socks with it, but when I was looking on Ravelry and kind of just thinking about what what patterns I wanted to do maybe. Um, I wanted to do something themed, like something Ir Irish or Ireland themed, um, but I didn't want to do some crazy cabled Celtic something crazy. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Um, I wanted to do something Irish themed or Ireland themed, but everything I was finding was like these crazy Irish knot cabled socks and they were gorgeous, but I didn't want to do something, didn't want to do something that complicated. So, um, it kind of came into my head to just maybe design something. Um, I really, really love these cables. I love how, um, stretched out they are. I love, um, I just love the look of them. And they kind of remind me of kind of knobbly branches in a sense, or like a twisted trunk or something like that. Um, and when I thought of that, what popped into my head was the story of the hawthorn trees that I believe Grace uh, told in one of her podcasts or vlogs. She was talking about how in Ireland, hawthorn trees are almost like sacred in a way. Um, they are kind of viewed with a little bit of superstition. Um, they are called the fairy trees because it is believed that, um, you know, hawthorne trees and the fairies, they're kind of, they're kind of intertwined. Um, and even when, what, what I thought was just amazing and hilarious and wonderful was even um, at new like building projects or when they're constructing a new road or railway, a lot of times they will um, have to, choose a different route because there will be hawthorn trees in the way and um, they will go around the hawthorn trees rather than or or build at a different site rather than cut them down 
you're not really supposed to cut down a hawthorn tree. It's bad luck. Um, or something like that. Something will happen if you cut down a hawthorn tree. I don't know it like, yeah, I don't know it super well, but um, that story just sort of stuck with me. And when I was researching, and by researching, I mean like Googling, like let's be real. I didn't, I didn't spend a whole lot of time researching. Um, I just, I was struck by the fairy trees and I really liked that. And it sort of, I was going back and forth with a couple different names. Um, and that just stuck in my head. I was like, okay, I, I have to call it the fairy tree socks. And whether or not it's really, I mean, there's nothing really tree-like about these socks, but that, uh, that sort of fairy tale or that legend just stuck with me while I was knitting them. So that's what we're going to go with. Yay! So that is the first one. That one's done. This is number two. This is my work in progress. And I am, I'm pretty close to being done. So we've got the cables here. We've got this really nice uh, texture in the middle. And I did a Fish Lips Kiss heel back here so you can see, and on the other one too, obviously. You can see that. This is my favorite heel uh, to wear and to knit. Actually, I have it memorized so I can just whip it out. Though this one, I think I messed up a little bit because we were playing cards on Sunday night with Seaver's family and um, I was A, a little tired and then B, obviously trying to pay attention. Um, so I think I am a little bit off. Like one side had, you kind of do these like short rows and one side had one more stitch than the other and I was like, oh crap, I did something wrong. But it's not so obvious that I have to go back. Like it's still gonna fit me, I think. I hope but yeah I think one side is just a little bit different than the other eh, oh well these things happen so um, and that's one thing about the pattern so I do have the pattern written up it is being test knit by some lovely lovely knitters out there thank you all very much um, if you contacted me about test knitting um, but I so with this sock pattern it's mainly just focused on the the body of the sock, the texture. So I don't tell you how to do the cast on, you know, the Judy's Magic cast on. Um, I don't tell you how to do a heel. You can do the Fish Lips Kiss heel, or you can do another short row heel, or you can do a heel flopping gusset. You can do a whatever you want to do, really. Um, sweet tomato heel, an afterthought heel, whatever you want to do. Um, add, add your favorite heel in there. Um, I prefer the Fish Lips Kiss and that's the one I used in my sock so I obviously can't write the directions of that on my pattern because it's not my pattern. <laughs> so go on Ravelry and buy that. It's only a dollar. I mean it is probably the best valued pattern you're gonna get. Um, this heel is amazing. So do that or if there's another one that you really enjoy doing, um, you know, just swap it out. Um, it's also very easily converted to top down. So even though I did uh, toe up, you can just take the chart and place it on. I'm going to have options for, um, this is 56 stitches. So I'm also going to have an option for 64 and for 72. I think those are kind of the three main um, stitch counts. But um, I'll also say like if you like I don't know, 60 stitches, how to kind of change that a little bit. Um, it's pretty easy to do. You just sort of have to add in a couple different places. But anyway, um, so hopefully that will be uh, out by the end of the month. I would really love for all of my testers to be, not that they have to be done by the end of the month, but at least maybe done with one sock. And then... Um, Kind of get some feedback from them. I'll get mine done. These should be done maybe within the week, so I, you know that'll be no problem. And then pictures taken, and then I'll I'll get it uploaded on Ravelry. So I'm really really excited about that. Um, it's been a while since I've put a pattern out there, and um, yeah, I'm just I have I have a good feeling about this one, and I'm I'm just really excited to see 
to see everyone else's socks and see how they like it. And I've been getting pretty good feedback from my testers, so that's really great. But, oh, and I forgot to say about the cuff at the top. So I did a twisted rib, a one by one twisted rib, which I really, really love the look of. And I like how it feels too. And then I did a really stretchy bind off. And this one, I always forget the name of this bind off, but it's the one included in um, the, oh my gosh, Hohe's pattern that I knit. Oh my gosh, what is the name of that? Pure Joy, Pure Joy, duh. The Pure Joy shawl. <laughs> so Hohe has an amazing stretchy bind off in the Pure Joy shawl. And um, if I think of it, I will look at my pattern and see what it's called. She puts the directions actually in the pattern for this bind off. So I don't know if it's her own making, but um, it's really, really nice. And it's my favorite. So I think I'm going to include kind of short directions for that as well, because I don't think, um, I don't think she, well, not, yeah. Can you, can you write out directions for that? I mean, it's really kind of a simple, simple thing. I don't know. I'll look. I'll make sure. I don't want to step on anyone's toes and like copyright infringement and stuff like that. So I'll check. But uh, yeah, so those are the fairy tree socks and make sure to look out for those uh, in the next, next couple weeks, next few weeks, at least by April. I'm hoping to get that on Ravelry. So yay. Okay. Last but not least, I have a couple of stash enhancements. I have some new yarny friends that I get to introduce you to. So this month at uh, Knit Circus, we are hosting an indie dyed trunk show, and we will be hosting indie dyed trunk shows for the next few months at least. Um, next month we have Hugh Loco, which I'm so excited about, and then the month after that we have um, Woolberry, actually Bethany's yarn is going to be at Knit Circus, which I'm so excited about too. And she's actually coming. Bethany is actually coming to Knit Circus and I'm going to meet her and I'm so excited. And she's going to be there with her yarn. And any of you who are in the Madison area, kind of playing on the first weekend of May, the first Saturday of May, um, we're going to, yeah, we're going to be doing that. So I, I think. It might not be the first Saturday, but don't quote me on that quite yet because we haven't written it in stone, but I'm, I'm pretty hopeful. So, okay. So the two yarns that I got from this trunk show that is there right now, um, and it's, did I say who is there? I don't know. Savvy Skeins out of Texas, I believe, um, is there right now. And I, she has so many gorgeous colorways that it was, of course, crazy hard to pick. Um, but I did end up getting two. So the first one that I got is called Storm Chaser. And I don't know what it was about this yarn. There was only one of this colorway on this base. This is in 8020 80, Merino Nylon base. And so it's her Sensible Sock. Um, 400 yards, 100 grams, just so you know. And I just kept going back to this colorway. I love the soft purples and that like lavendery blue color um, goes into, you know, kind of a darker grayish purple there. Oh gosh, I just love, I just love it so much. And all I could think about was Hermione's everyday socks. They need to be a pair of Hermione's everyday socks. Doesn't this look like the colorway that Hermione would knit with and wear? so so that's what this is gonna be very excited about that and then the second one I grabbed um, also kind of surprised me they're kind of in the same vein but a little bit different this is violet and this is on her lavish sock which is hundred percent superwash merino 400 yards and that almost fell so I, yeah, again with the purples, I don't know what that's about, um, but I really love this and I love this part up here. 
I think is my favorite. So the like cream and dark purple into this like orangey pink. That just caught me. And I, every time, so we've had her yarn for about a week and a half now. And every time I walked past the table where we have it all set out, um, I would pick up this yarn and just stare at it. So obviously that meant I had to take it home. So yeah, this is, I don't know what this will be. I have it in my head that this would be a really, really cute um, flax light for a little girl. Um, actually, everything I look at now, I'm like, oh, that would be such a cute baby sweater. Oh, I was telling my sister that, um, and Saber and I are not close to having children. Obviously, we're getting married in June, and then we want to wait just a little longer before we even, you know, consider that. But, um... For some reason, I have been looking at baby sweaters and thinking about what yarns to knit baby sweaters in. And I'm just like, I'm going to have to start to like kind of keep my baby fever like at bay. I'm going to have to start just knitting all the baby sweaters and like putting them away. And yeah, some I'll, I'll give away as presents or something like that, but others I'll just keep for, um, you know, whenever we do have kids and then I'll just have a whole store of them. But... Yeah, so I thought that this would be a really, really unique and, oh my gosh, why do I keep dropping it? Unique and cute uh, flax light sweater. So who knows, I might just, I might just give in and just cast on a few baby sweaters for no one in particular, but oh well, we gotta knit what we wanna knit, right? So. That looks like it's just about everything um, that I have been working on and everything that I have gotten over the past two weeks. Like I said, there has just not been a whole lot of knitting time. I'm really hoping that today I can dig deep and just get some get some crafting done. Um, yeah, after I edit and upload. Well, during. I can usually knit quite a lot uh, during editing, so that's kind of nice, but so. Yeah, so I hope you all had a fantastic couple of weeks. I um, hope you're doing some fun things um, over your weekends and um, getting lots of crafting time in yourself. Where you are, hopefully it is starting to get warmer. Um, it's starting to get a little bit warmer here. Still need some jackets and, and some warm-ish clothes, but um, pretty soon, before we know it, it'll be spring and we'll be able to go outside and enjoy some sunshine and, and warm weather and we'll be packing away our hand knits for the rest of the rest of the summer, rest of the season, I guess. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If, if you are a new viewer, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Or if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Um, that just gets my podcast out there a little more so that other people might be able to watch it as well. If you are a returning viewer, thank you. Thank you so much. And I, I always love spending a little bit of time with you talking about knitting and showing you all the, the fun projects I've been working on. So I can't wait to see you all next time. I am hopefully going to be able to podcast again next Monday. We are starting to get into a little bit of a busy season. Um, the next two months are gonna be a little crazy with um, wedding stuff and showers and parties and there's a lot of stuff planned. So um, if I am not at home on a Monday when I have the day off, um, I might not be able to record that week, but I will keep you posted and I hope to see you all again very, very soon. Have a great week and do things that make your heart happy. I will be doing the same. Bye.